by making up for lost time. Welcome in, folks. It's a beautiful day here at the KISU ballpark. Just the kind of day for baseball. I'm Jake Westbrook, and with me is your color commentator, McLean. We're looking at a great show today, folks, so stay tuned for some quality entertainment. At the top of the order, we have Milton Burrow, and batting cleanup is going to be the great Gildersleeve. In case you don't speak baseball, folks, what Jake is trying to say is that you are listening to Yesterday Today, the show that brings you the best of yesterday's radio today. And today, the theme of the show is baseball. Yes, baseball. Classic springtime tradition. I mean, I myself am more of a football guy. But, I have to say, sitting in the stands, eating hot dogs, and spitting out sunflower seeds, that is my idea of a quality afternoon. No wonder it's America's national pastime. Yeah, look at that. We got a guest. Maybe they can throw out a ceremonial pitch. Come in. Hey there, fellas. I couldn't help but overhear you two were talking about baseball in here. Hey, Frankie. I guess our soundproofing isn't all that soundproof after all. Well, soundproofing is a one-way street. We keep sounds out, but we don't keep them in. This is our uh, neighbor, folks, Frankie Spork, a private detective. Well, in any case, I heard you talking about baseball, which just so happens to relate to a case that I'm working on. I was wondering if maybe you guys had heard anything about it. What kind of case could you be working on that involves baseball? Well, you'd be surprised. Sports is a big business. Some of the most shady doings I've ever uncovered have been in the world of organized athletics. This case is shaping up to be no different. We're dealing with baseball umpires, some of the most crooked people in the industry. I'm working on uncovering corruption in the local umpiring racket. Corruption and umpiring baseball? Yeah. Normally with a case this serious, I'd be worried about someone involved trying to shoot me. But with how well umpires see, I don't think they'd be able to hit me. (laughs) Do we have a local umpiring racket? It's not like we're close to any major league team or anything. Oh, no. I'm not talking about the major leagues. This little incident threatens something much more wholesome than that. Like what? Little League. You're investigating Little League umpires for corruption? One of the coaches tipped me off that the fix was in for the local Little League, so I am on the case. Wait, so wait, you're you're telling me that some Little League coach told you that his team's games were being rigged, so he hired you to investigate the umpires? That's ridiculous. Hey, I don't question the way you guys make your money. But what coach would be so pathetic and and immature and and such a poor loser to hire a a private investigator after his team loses? Okay, Frank, how's the investigation going? Did you get to the bottom of this crooked league yet? Easy, Snorthoff. These things take time. I was just interviewing a couple of potential leads now. Sydney? Wait, you're the little league coach that hired him? You're a little league coach? Sure. I'm just trying to make sure the integrity of the game stays intact. Baseball is what America was built on, you know, and I can't stand to see it sullied. Okay, all right, calm down, Lou Gehrig. While we sort out this situation, we're going to get to the first part of the show. Like I mentioned, we have an episode of the Milton Burrow Show and his tribute to baseball. You and me are going to clean up this racket, Spork. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this week the baseball season was opened as President Truman threw out the first ball. That's right. We now present a foul burrow Texaco would like to throw out. <laughs> and here he is, Milton Burrow. Can you please, please, let's not make too much noise, please. You're liable to wake up the New York Giants. <laughs> Ah, baseball. I love it. I really love it. Even when I was a small kid, the big boys let me play baseball with them. They had to. My stomach was first base. (laughs) Leo DeRocha, he is back in good shape again. He just recovered from a serious operation. He had an umpire's nose removed from his mouth. (laughs) Actually, though, I have no favorite New York ball team. Today I saw the Dodgers and the Giants game. The, you saw it too? I just enjoyed myself, that's all. I, I was just like watching my mother-in-law and my landlord trying to knock each other's brains out. <laughs> I wish them both good luck. 
What an impressive ceremony in Washington when President Truman officially opened the season. How Harry rooted and cheered for the senators. But it did him no good. He still can't get Congress to play ball with him. <laughs> I, uh... Do... Oh, but my mother... My mother loves baseball. She, she's at every game, shouting all the time. Sometimes she gets so excited she forgets what she's selling. <laughs> After all, somebody's got to, got to sell the peanuts that I worked for. You know. <laughs> Where's Mr. Gallup? Oh, Mr. Gallup, Mr. Gallup. What is it, Bill? Well, <laughs> Bill. It sounds like the second chorus of a sleep in the deep just before the baritone blows a gasket. Uh, come on, Mr. Gallup. Now join the program. The audience missed you. And that's what I'm afraid of. What's that? They'll miss you and hit me. <laughs> Isn't, isn't that sweet of Mr. Gallup, isn't it? You know, he, he carried that egg around since Easter just to lay it here tonight. <laughs> you just... Fine, keep it going. <laughs> There's scattered applause tonight, you know. <laughs> no individual laughing tonight. You just don't... You just don't appreciate me, Mr. Gallup. What's the difference, Mr. Gallup, between my jokes and the other radio comedians' jokes? So about 24 hours. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Gallup, you're a gem, really. You're a gem, and your nose looks more like a Gillette. Get a load of that beak. The last time I saw a nose like that, it was fencing with Errol Flynn. I, I, Mr. Gallup, I, I don't mean to, to insult you. You know that, don't you? Sure. I mean, I'm just trying to encourage you just to put some weight on. Put some weight on. Look at me. Well, that explains one mystery. One mystery? What's that? When they took the pot of gold off the air, I know who got the pot. <laughs> Don't. Now, please. Oh, you clever, clever boy. <laughs> boy, I keep calling him. Gallup remembers the Yankees when they had a dinosaur playing second base. <laughs> but on with our salute to baseball tonight. <laughs> To spread the American game of baseball throughout the world, foreign announcers this year broadcast the opening games to their respective countries. We take you to the broadcasting booth of Yankee Stadium to hear Cecil Burl, England's ace sportscaster. Cheerio, cheerio and pip pip and all that sort of stuff. Hi ho, England. Well, this is Cecil broadcasting an American baseball game. Apparently, American baseball does not pay very much money because the players are in well, well, don't go away. Many, uh... <laughs> many, <laughs> oh, I've got something in my mouth. English money. Many... You can tell by the pounds. Many of my... <laughs> thank you very much. Don't applaud. <laughs> don't! Stay asleep. Many... Many of my English friends are here today. Uh, ah, there is the Duke of Yorkshire. Hello, Duke. Hello, Cecil. <laughs> My mistake. It's the Duchess of Yorkshire. <laughs> the crowd's very aroused. Chap by the name of Johnny Mize at the plaffer. By Jove, evidently, he just did something. What was it? What was it? He did the cat, the brute. What did he do? Isn't that dreadful? Isn't that a shame? He struck a cow. He struck a poor, defenseless cow. I was just informed he hit a four-bagger. <laughs> In the very next booth is the French sports announcer, Henri Pierre Burl, broadcasting the game to France. Bonjour, Monsieur, Mesdames. And all the ships at sea. <laughs> Uh, this is Henri Pierre, and for the benefit of my fellow Frenchman, I will explain the game of baseball. Je vais remettre le corset de Abarabarzalato et mon gore corporté le corset de. Boys, it is like the Folies Brochère, only here they have only four bags. <laughs> but the game. Come on, wake up, laugh tonight, laugh. But the game here is just about stopping. 
with my binoculars, I am following the ball. It lands in a box seat. In the box seat is a gentleman with a beautiful blonde. The gentleman throws the ball back. For the benefit of my fellow Frenchman, I will keep my binoculars on the blonde. <laughs> ah, but the game starts. The batter, Hermel. He is trying to get to first base. So is the gentleman with the blonde. Je me rodelis. It's on for today. Ah, wait, wait, hold it. Hermel is center. Here comes the pitch. She still says no. Je me rodelis. And if it was a Frenchman sitting there with the blonde, le bordel du cosmos. Mon de le coste. No score. Ah. Ah, the stands are packed solid. They are packed solid, <laughs> but not like the blonde. <laughs> stay tuned. <laughs> ah, stay tuned to this broadcast, and later I am going to interview Mr. Bert Schotten, the head of the Dodgers. So you better not go away, or I'll give you all a shot in the head. <laughs> Even in far-off China, millions are hearing the game shortwave to them by announcer Chu Chan Burl. me here at Yangtze Stadium. BMT. Uh, get off 161st Street. Okay, okay, game starting. I haven't the least idea what the hell is going on here. Now explain, explain baseball to my fellow Chinese. A man throwing rice cake at man holding big noodle. A man hit rice cake with noodle. Everybody must sugar. And now, here a word for my sponsor, the Atangu, Ezayataya Sapo, and Sons. <laughs> Better known as the Chuckling Chinese. Atongayasa Bargain 1922 SX Convertible Rickshaw. Radio and heater, hydrometric ashtray. Remember address, corner, Eda Agesa Adome. And Oyaba Street. It is a candy store. Ask for Sussman. <laughs> 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 Thank you. That was part of April Showers. Just a drip. Played by... <laughs> played by Alan Roth and his home run orchestra. And the minute that they start playing, you want to run for home. Oh, he's, got, he's a great orchestra leader. I told, I told him that the orchestra needed more brass, so this week they went out and bought a spittoon. Well, on... <laughs> I'm kidding. On with our next Texaco feature. We continue our salute to baseball as we present... Baseball Forum Tonight. Baseball Forum Tonight. The question. Should Milton Berle become a baseball player just because some of his relatives are double-headers... Thank you, Mr. Gallup. You're in there pitching, and that last one was a real sinker. Now, let us, um, let us... <laughs> the tea is silent. I'll explain that for you, please. <laughs> now, let us have some questions from the audience. All right, this young man in the first row who's been watching too many fights on television and has cauliflower eyes. Young man, tell me, uh, what is your name? My name is Artie Shaw. <laughs> Artie Shaw? Stop simulating surprise. I'm not the artist you who's trying to build a harem the hard way. I see, I see. I'm single. You're, you say you're single? Yeah, who needs a wife? Who needs those loving kisses? Who needs that kitschy, kitschy cooing? Yeah, who needs it? I do. <laughs> the matter? I, I should have in my bleak and dreary existence a little love and ecstasy? No, no, look, Artie, would you do... Artie! I just took the name Artie Shaw, so maybe I'll get some of his safe plus. All right, all right. Have you a question about baseball? What do you think I raised my hand for? What is this, a schoolroom or something? No, no, look, look, you don't understand. Have you got a question? I got a question, I got a question. Well, tell me. What's all this subversive mishmash about us baseball fans all being crazy? Well, that, that's... I'm not... watching the game, see? Quietly screaming my head off, see? So, a little ice cream drips from my chin. Zing, they're testing me for hydrophobia. <laughs> 
Now, look, you... We get no respect. I'm sitting with my girl in the stands, behaving like a pipe of German, you understand? Yeah. Suddenly, the guy in front of me cuts loose with a string of dirty words. Dirty words? In front of an innocent Brooklyn girl, he says, Hooray for DeRosha. <laughs> That's terrible. And those umpires. What's Ooh, that? they're getting so touchy. Chip, 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 chip. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday, I yell a few words at one zing. I'm thrown out of the park. Well, President Truman said that that was all right. Now, wait a minute. Now, please. Now, now please. Now, please, young man, please. I'm tired of being pointed at as a screwball. I'm sick of being laughed at six, six, hill. I yell. Now, wait a minute. I understand. I understand. Young man, you want to be treated like a normal, intelligent person. That's right. Now, what is your question? Where can I get a picture of Cookie, cookie Lava Jetto tattooed get on my... <laughs> cookie? That boy has to learn the alphabet. <laughs> hey, you're adorable. And speaking of adorable people, here, let's hear from the ladies, all right? The woman in the first row shaking the nuts out of her squirrel coat. <laughs> Madam, uh, step up and tell me, what is your name? Hello, Lafini. I'm a homemaker. Are you interested in baseball? Not me. It's that jerky husband of mine. He ain't got out of that baseball suit he wears for three years. He's getting to be a regular Bob Smeller. <laughs> your husband is a great baseball fan? He's nuts. Yesterday, while he was watching the game, he got up from his seat and went charging after the ball. He was cut to ribbons. He was cut to ribbons? Yeah, he was watching the game on television. <laughs> Oh, I see, I see. Your husband sees a lot of games. Yeah, he's got a head for baseball. A head for baseball? Yeah, I can get it through a knot hole. <laughs> Your husband has a small head? Small. When I get my hair cut, I've got to use an egg cup. <laughs> it's really narrow, eh? He's the only man who can look through a keyhole with both eyes. <laughs> Did your husband ever play baseball? He was a star pitcher for the Pitkin Polecats. Well, let me understand. A, a pitcher for the Pitkin Polecats? Yeah, with him on the mound, the batters just kept fanning. <laughs> the batters kept fanning? With my husband near you, you got to keep the air circulating. I am. <laughs> Your husband's really crazy about baseball? It's awful. He turned the whole house into a baseball field. He got a diamond in the living room. The dining room's the grandstand, the kitchen's the bleachers. Where's the dugout? Don't ask. Thank you very much, Mrs. Phoenix. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, our honored baseball guest, he's baseball's most terrific slugger, that tough fighting cyclone of the diamond, jolting Joe Featherfield, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Joe Featherfield. Thank you, Mr. Green. <laughs> Thank you for this precious opportunity to say hi-ho to the loyal fans who have followed my career from the time I was with the bums in Brooklyn to Milton Burrell, the biggest bum of them all. <laughs> Mr. Featherfield, it's truly amazing how you thrill the crowds with your spectacular, breathtaking play. How about that? <laughs> Tell us, uh, Joe, well, what was your best year in baseball? 1930. Yeah. I got married, and they made me the Rookie of the Year. They did? Because you got married, they voted you the Rookie of the Year? Yeah. They took one look at my wife and said I got the worst Rookie of the Year. <laughs> what, uh, tell us, uh, where did you meet your wife? At Yankee Stadium. She was in charge of the bats. In charge of the bats? Yeah. She led the formation when they flew over the stadium. <laughs> did you... Did your wife play baseball? Yes, yeah, but she had to give it up. She kept losing the ball in her beard. Wait a minute. Let me understand. Your wife has a beard? Yes, yeah, she played with a bush league. <laughs> Was she a good player? Oh, yes, indeed he do. What? Yes, indeed he do. We should make a whole program out of that one line. <laughs> In one game, the other team was leading, and she came thundering down from third base and slid home. She wiped out the lead? She wiped out the grant? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Featherby. Tonight, you know, ladies and gentlemen, we're discussing baseball, and I got to tell you what happened to me this week. You know, I'd been feeling a little run down, and 
you know, overworked in television and radio, and I dropped in to see my doctor, Dr. Wiggerson, and he told me to relax to take in a baseball game with my little son, Junior. Well, luckily, Junior is home from reform school. <laughs> they have a holiday. It's Dillinger's birthday. So, so Junior and I, we went to Ebbets Field. <laughs> This way, kick it. Uh, here you are for my son and I, uh, box seats, right next to the dugout. Come, Junior. Junior! Junior! Stop biting that old lady's leg. Stop <laughs> biting that old lady's leg. I'll give you a shot in the head. Quiet! <laughs> oh, what these kids pick up on the radio and television from those comedians. Let's go to our box hey, seats. Pop, look who's coming. Oh, no. Hi, Miss <laughs> Sam and Martha Harrison. The minute I saw you, I said to Martha, there's Milky Burr. He'll sit with us. Isn't that what I said, Martha? Yes. <laughs> oh, hello, Martha. I didn't recognize you in that catcher's mask. <laughs> sit with you, Sam. I just came here to relax. We've got two extra tickets. Why sit among strangers? And besides, I'd like to have someone to talk to besides Martha. I suppose that's a break. Yes. <laughs> okay, where are the seats? What's the difference? Let's try <laughs> Sam, how much higher do we have to go? Just a little higher, Milton. Oh, no. Look, Sam, I just want to see who's pitching for the Dodgers, not who's flying for the American Airlines. <laughs> I've never been so high in all my life. Oh, yeah. How about New Year's Eve? <laughs> Quiet. You with that screaming. What are you yelling about? Here I hit you on the top of the head and I ran the point right through my hand. <laughs> Sam, tell me, how much higher? Uh, uh, here they are. Okay, let's sit down. Oh, gee, it's nice and quiet. The game's starting. Uh, who's at bat, Junior? Pee Wee Reese of the Dodgers. Mm. From this seat, they're all Pee Wees. <laughs> there goes the first pitch. Well, what happened? What was it? What was it? Ball one. <laughs> Just ball one? <laughs> I wonder what would happen if it was a strike. Here's the next pitch. <laughs> Now I know. <laughs> My nerve. Sam, this is too violent for me. I'd better go home. Oh, Milty, relax. Get into the spirit of the game. Come on, baby. Let's go, boy. Hit him up. Pull the ball. Go, go, go. Mm. <laughs> Martha, please. Martha, don't get excited, please. I... Martha, don't get excited. I, I, I better relax, j just like the doctor said. Okay, Pop, get me a hot dog. I was a hot dog, Junior. I am not running all the way down into the stands for a hot dog. You kidding? Junior, you, you, you understand, Daddy is a sick man. Yes, Junior, your daddy's in no condition to go up and down those stairs for just one hot dog. Thank you, Sam. So to make your trip worthwhile, Milty, yeah, get one for me too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Sam, Martha, yeah. make it two. Oh no. All right, I'll go. And if Junior, if, if I don't come back, my insurance policy is in the cookie jar. Right next to the autographed picture of Henny Youngman. Here goes, well, I'll just... Three hot dogs. There you are. Thank you very much. <laughs> my lungs. Just a few more. Just a few more steps. Just a few. Oh, no. I know I forgot something. What is it, sir? Mustard. There. Thank you. We're over here, Pop. I made it. Here's your hard. Here's your hard. Here's your hard. It's the hot dog. The hot dog. My heart. Let me sit down. Who's at bat? Pee Wee Reese. Still at bat, eh? Yeah, but this is his third time. Third time? What's the score? Eight to eight. It's the sixth inning. Sixth inning? I was only gone five. What happened? What happened? Ball two. <laughs> this is too much for me. I gotta get home, Sam. What I... a game, I'm near the old boy. Please, think of your heart. Only three... 
Only three more innings. I need quiet. Quiet. Peanuts, popcorn, hand grenades. <laughs> Get me some peanuts, Pop. All right. Okay, where's my change? Oh, I dropped it. Now I gotta crawl under the seats. Here goes. <laughs> What happened? What happened? Reese Walk Robinson double two guys for being three homers. The Dodgers got eight more runs. All this happened while I was under the seats? Then the Giants came up. <laughs> the Giants? By single, Lockman double. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the score? 32 to 32. <laughs> Pitchers battle, huh? Who's up now? Pee Wee Reese. <laughs> Must be his bat and ball. <laughs> Sam. Sam, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Take me home. Take me home. It's a tie game, the ninth inning. Come on, you... Missy! Sam, what's the matter? Mouth is gone. Mouth is gone. Sam, take it easy. My mouth is lost. My mouth. We got to find her. Easy, Sam. Do you know what this means? Martha alone among thousands of strangers? A girl who can't say no? <laughs> Sam, please. This, this is very Mouth's serious. Well, you got to find her. You go down that way. I'll go this way. All right. I'll go. Martha. Martha. Martha, 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 Rambling Rose of the Wild One. Martha, Martha. No, I, I can't make hey, it. Hey, Millie, where were you? We missed you. You missed me? Sure, didn't we, Martha? Yeah. <laughs> so, Martha's back. Yeah. Oh, Sam. Please get me into an oxygen tank. But it's only the 14th inning now. 14th inning? The game's tied up 37 to 37. Who's keeping score? Dunn and Bradstreet? <laughs> Who's at bat? Hey, we read! Ah! <laughs> Silly of me to ask. Please, just, just, let me, just let me see him hit one ball. There's a pitch. Ball ball. Watch out, Pop. Duck your head. <laughs> oh, my head. <laughs> Where am I? Wah, 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 wah. Pop, gee, you missed all the excitement. Excitement? Yeah, the umpire, everybody was up here. They were trying to dig the ball out of your head. <laughs> My head. Junior, Sam, carry me home. Take me home, will you, please? Pop, the game will be over any minute. The Giants are up. Who's it back? Pee Wee Reese. Pee Wee Reese. He's with Brooklyn. But while you were out cold, he was traded. Absolutely. <laughs> Sam, it's almost midnight. I gotta go home. <laughs> What, what, what happened? The game's what? over, Pop. Brooklyn wins. Brooklyn wins. The game's over. It's over now. I can go home. I can go home. Play What's that? They're starting the game. Game? What game? Milky, didn't we tell you? It's a double header. Oh, no. I'll kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Now that that show's over, Sydney, I can get to the uh, the main question on my mind right now. What are you doing as the coach of a Little League baseball team? You don't know anything about baseball. Outside of trying to memorize random Mets player names to impress the producer. Well, that's just that. See, I'm going to be a father in a matter of weeks, and I've got no experience in sports. I figure the best way to one day be able to teach my children the joys of baseball is to be a baseball coach. Think of all the knowledge I'm going to gather in my many years of coaching ahead of me, leading a team of young players out onto the court every spring. Yeah, okay, but aren't you supposed to be dispensing knowledge to the players you have right now? Well, they teach me as much as I teach them. I would bet they teach you a lot more than you teach them. Well, our first baseman taught me how to blow a bubble with chewing gum the other day. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so what is this about hiring Frankie Spork to investigate the umpire? Oh, well, that's very simple. You see, after our team started out the year with five straight losses, at first, I know this is going to sound silly, I thought I might not be a great coach. <laughs> I know, I know. But then I started picking up on some subtle hints that these games were being rigged in favor of the opposition. Subtle hints. Yeah, Frank has all the details. Tell him, Frank. Yeah, yeah, it's all in my notes here that I wrote after Sydney told me all about it. Let's see, what did he say? Uh, the opposing team's pitcher throws the ball so fast our batter can't hit it, and the umpire calls it a strike anyway. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Whenever the other team hits the ball and he goes out of bounds, the umpire gives the other team a point, even though they lost the ball. Hmm. Sydney, those are just the rules of baseball. That's how the game works. Well, it is. Yeah, hey, come to think of it, I might have been so excited about revealing corruption in sports that I, uh, 
Yeah, I sort of overlooked that when Sydney told me about it. Sydney, it kind of just sounds like the other teams are better than yours. Well, but, but, but that's impossible. I poured my heart and soul into coaching this team. Leading them to a championship has been a lifelong dream of mine. Well, a lifelong dream since last week, but still. I admire your enthusiasm, Sid, but just because you care doesn't mean you have the best baseball knowledge. You know what I mean? Maybe getting an assistant coach is a good idea. Preferably one that knows a little something about baseball. Well, you might have a point there. Hey, uh, Frank, what about you? Do you want to help me coach the team? I'm not sure I'd be much of a coach. I like baseball, but mostly the sitting in the stands, eating hot dogs, and spitting out sunflower seeds part of it. Hey, me too. Well, there's got to be someone around here that can help me create a championship-caliber Little League team. Hmm. Well, sorry you're out of a case, Frankie. Out of a case? Are you kidding? Just because Sydney was wrong about a couple of details doesn't disprove anything. If there's one thing I know about umpires, it's that they've always got some type of angle, and the Little League ones can't be any different. I'm off to the local PTA meeting to see if I can catch a new lead over there. See you in the funding papers. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? Hold on a cotton-picking moment, I've got it! Got what? No time to talk. I gotta go get a coach. <laughs> well, while Sydney is out recruiting, here's the second half of our show, an episode of The Great Gildersleeve. It's April in Summerfield, when nature can hardly contain itself. Tiny green blades are shooting through the sod. Fragrant buds are blossoming on the trees. And the great Gildersleeve has burst out of his office a little early. Take me out to the ball game. Rump, da, 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 uh, hello, Bertie. Your water department called. They just hung up. Oh? Your secretary, Miss Bessie. She said Mary Willigo was in after you left asking about some reports. Think you better call her back? I don't think so, Bertie. By the time I got back to the office and got out the report, it would be tomorrow anyway. <laughs> so I might as well wait till tomorrow, huh? <laughs> Where's Leroy? He's been in the refrigerator for the past half hour. Huh? I better go pull him out before he freezes. <laughs> I have a surprise for him. Don't you go start eating too, Mr. Gilsley. We got stew for dinner. <laughs> stew? Oh, uh, Leroy! Hiya! Just make a little sandwich. All right, Leroy, but put back all that stuff in the refrigerator when you get through. That's my sandwich. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Look, Leroy, got a big surprise for you. Here, catch. Gosh, swell up, what is it? Open the box and see. Golly, a catcher's mitt. <laughs> well, I promised it to you two years ago. Just waiting for you to grow up and the price to go down. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, what a swell mitt. Official league. Yeah, you bet. Autographed and everything. Um, who did A.G. Spaulding catch for, Leroy? <laughs> <laughs> he made it, Unc. Oh, he made it. Oh. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Unc. Hey, toss me the orange. Let's see how it works. Orange? Yeah, we shouldn't do this in the kitchen, my boy, but just once. All right, here it comes. Oh, boy, I'll never miss one with this big myth. Uh, let me step back a little. Now, Leroy. Just one more. Let it come. Well, just one more, then. What are y'all doing out here in my kitchen? Uh, baseball season, Bertie. Here, Bertie, cut! Watch out, Leroy. Leroy, don't you... Oh, Leroy, just look at that right in my stool. Leroy. Gosh, she must it, huh? Leroy, Bertie don't lie. No ball playing in the kitchen. That's one thing. Bertie don't lie. Ball playing in the kitchen and oranges in the stew. Yeah, well, we're sorry. Bertie. It's fine to be sorry, but no ball playing in here. This is Bertie's kitchen. This ain't no Yankee Stadium. You hear that, Leroy? <laughs> Mr. Gilsey, what would you think if Bertie served you stew with oranges in it? The stew is in now, Bertie. Bertie can't get dinner with oranges flying all around the place. This is Bertie's kitchen. This ain't no Yankee Stadium. Bertie, we're... Mr. Gilsey, do you know what this is? Yes, Bertie, of course. That's it's... right. Bertie's kitchen. It ain't no Yankee Stadium. <laughs> You hear that, Leroy? No Yankee Stadium. Let's go play outside. Hey, Leroy, let me catch one with the mat. Are oh, you too little, Craig? Here comes the curve, Leroy. Hold it, Uncle. Here comes Piggy with his bat. I get the bat, then. I'm first up, Piggy. Hey, look, Pig. No miss. Come on, 
Piggy, get in the game. We need a bat. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hey, Keen Mill, Leroy. Let me catch a few. Now, Piggy, it's my turn. But gosh, Uncle, I just got it. Well, who bought it for you? <laughs> well, Uncle. All right, you shouldn't be playing in the streets anyway. Break it up. Go home, fellas. Let's all go home. Okay, here's the mitt. Well, I'll just catch a couple if you want me to. I get the bat, then. Here's the bat, Leroy. I'll pitch. Hey, Leroy, I'm up first. I yell first. Oh, and you can't hit anything, Craig. I'm up. I'll tell my father... Now, Craigie. Go tell your father. Now, Leroy. I want a bat, bat hog. Now, Craig, that Leroy bat. He gave up his mitt, didn't he? You have to be a good sport and give something up, too. Okay, I'll catch them. You will not. <laughs> Pitch it across, Piggy. I want to catch. If you don't let me catch, I'll cry. Ah! All right, all right, catch. Leroy, give me the bat. Why, for corn's sake. Step up to the plate, Mr. Plate? Where is it? Right there, the manhole cover. Oh, standing on it. <laughs> Got to go on a diet. Hmm? <laughs> Let her come, Piggy. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Here comes the car around the corner. Oh, don't hit it. How do you like that? A home run. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, right through the windshield. <laughs> Gosh, he's getting out of his car, Uncle. Leroy, stay with me and face the music. Well, Commissioner Gildersleeve. Oh, Mayor Tewilliger, we should have run, Leroy. Oh, hello, Mr. Mayor. Oh, this is the way you get your reports in. What do you have to say for yourself, Gildersleeve? <laughs> Gildersleeve, this is an outrage. Out here with the boys breaking windshields. Why, I nearly lost control of my car. You encourage these boys to play baseball in the streets? Oh, no, Mr. Mayor. As a matter of fact, I was just telling them they shouldn't be playing in the streets. Mm. I said, break it up, didn't I, Leroy? But, gosh, there's no place else to play. What's this? Uh, that's right, Mr. Mayor. We don't have any place else to play. I mean, they don't. Nonsense, Gildersleeve. The city provides parks for recreation. Why, we build a number of baseball diamonds. They're always full. Oh? Yeah, the city leagues are always using the parks. Yeah, the big guys. Well, looks like the big guys monopolize the city streets, too. What are we going to do about this, Gildersleeve? Do about it? Well, oh, I'll pay for the windshield, Mr. Mayor. Well, I know that. You'll get the bill. Yeah. But uh, what are we going to do about these kids playing in the streets? It's a deplorable condition. I quite agree with you. Good. Why don't you do something about it? Me? You're the one city commissioner who seems to have time for this sort of thing. So let's see some results. I didn't see any around your office this afternoon, Gildersleeve. Well, I considered this a more deplorable condition, like you said, Your Honor. Mr. Mayor? We have to get a ball diamond for the boys. Well, Commissioner? Well, I'll get it. Fine. Let's get it done, Gildersleeve. Oh, depend on me. Uh, and Mr. Mayor? Yes? When you get in the car, would you mind throwing our ball back? <laughs> Sit down, Gilder. What's on your mind? <laughs> Well, I have something important to discuss with you, Judge. Must be important if you wanted me to give up my bowling tonight. What is it? Well, the mayor has put me on a special project. Special project? Mm -hmm. You mean at last he's found out the water department can run itself? <laughs> <laughs> now, Horace, this is no laughing matter. The boys in this town need a place to play baseball, and I'm going to see that they get it. We have to keep them off the streets. Wonderful, Gildy. When did you become so public-spirited? I broke the mayor's windshield. Uh. So I heard. <laughs> well, it wasn't very funny, Judge, believe me. No, I'm sure it wasn't, Gildy. I've never approved of boys playing in the streets. It's extremely hazardous. You said it. This town has long needed someone to direct the activities of our young people. You're right, Judge. I've often thought, what a fine thing it would be if Summerfield had a boys' club. Boys' club? And I stand ready to heed the call whenever the community looks to me. All right, Judge. I'm not asking you to take over. I just want some advice. The mayor's put me in charge. As I say, Gildy, anything I can do. Yes, yes. <laughs> Judge, you know the real estate situation. Who's got some vacant property big enough for a baseball diamond? Nobody in our neighborhood. Pieces of property that large are pretty scarce. But let's get out the maps and look. Maps? Oh. A lot of maps there, Judge. Well, cartography is one of my hobbies, Gildy. Let's see what we have here now. Hey, there's a big piece of property. Who owns that? I'm afraid that's out of the question, Gildy. That belongs to the Russians now. Russians? <laughs> we have the wrong map. 
No. <laughs> now, this is the map of Summerfield. Where? As you see, there aren't many large areas that haven't been broken up into lots. Wait a minute. What's that big vacant space right there? Why can't we get that? Well, that's underwater most of the time, Gildy. I'll have it drained. I've got the authority. I hardly think the mayor would approve, Gildy. That's your reservoir. It is? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Better not drain that. <laughs> By the way, here's a vacant piece of property that I handle. It happens to belong to an old flame of yours, Leela Ransom. Leela? Just think, Gildy, if you'd married her, you'd own it now. Uh, uh, yes. <clears throat> Let's see. It is big, isn't it? Not too far away, either. Third Street. Yeah, might do. And I'm sure that she'd be delighted to have the boys play there. Good old Leela. But as a matter of policy, in Leela's absence, I usually take up property discussions with her cousin. Adeline Fairchild? Well, I'll take it up with her cousin myself. <laughs> Perhaps I'd better get my hat and go along with you. You've helped enough, Judge. Now you go bowling and try to stay out of the alleys, you old goat. <laughs> <laughs> I was just sitting here thinking about you. Well, I've been thinking about you. Mm, how nice. Come on into the parlor and we'll sit down and think together. <laughs> well, I've already done the thinking, Adeline. Now it's time to act. Gracious, you sound so serious. Oh, this is serious. But nothing the two of us can't work out together. How interesting. Sit down. <laughs> And I'll turn on the radio and get some dreamy music. So much nicer to talk with music. You don't have to talk so much. Uh, uh, never mind the music. I'll do the talking. Throckmorton, I just love you when you get so domineering. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Adeline, you know that big vacant lot of Leela's on 3rd Street? Mm -hmm. You suppose she'd turn it over to us? To us? Mercy. Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful lot for, <laughs> wonderful lot for kids, Adeline. Just what we need. Well, I don't know if Cousin Leela would let us have it if she knew what we had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with your own property? My property? Oh, that's out of the question. Not even enough yard for Leroy. And we have to keep our boys off the streets, Adeline. No girls? <laughs> <laughs> well, I had a baseball team in mind. A baseball team? Goodness gracious. Well, of course, Grandmother Fairchild had eight boys. Had eight? <laughs> Wait a minute, Adeline. <laughs> I think you misunderstand me. <laughs> the neighborhood kids need a place to play baseball, and I thought Leela's lot would be just the thing. Oh, well, I think that's a marvelous idea, Throckmorton. You do? Well, great, great. <laughs> I've been watching the boys playing in the street, and I've just worried myself sick that something terrible would happen. It did. I mean, uh, it is pretty dangerous. That's why I'm behind this thing, Adeline. We even organize a boys' club. An idea that came to me just a little while ago. Well, you just go ahead and use that little old lot any way that you see fit, and I'll write Cousin Leela about it. She'll be proud of you, Throckmorton. And so is your little Adeline. My little... <laughs> Uh, how about that dreamy music now, huh? Let's relax and have fun. Oh, Throckmorton, I just love you when you're so carefree like a big jolly bear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, nice music. Lovely. Mm-hmm. You know... It was funny how I misunderstood you. It is a silly thought. You and me and a baseball team of our own. <laughs> I don't know a thing about baseball. You don't? Well, I'll be glad to teach you. We could make quite a game of it. Oh? Well, what's the first thing you do? Well, let me see. The first thing to do is to try to get the first base. Oh, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Now let's get back to things in Summerfield. 
Ever since the mayor lit a match under the great gilder sleeve, he's been rushing around town like a ball of fire, promoting his project to keep the boys off the streets. Hello, Bessie. Commissioner Gildersleeve. I won't be back to the office this afternoon, Bessie. Working on my boys' club. And now you call Uncle Charlie down at the reservoir and have him take the city weed cutter over to that big vacant lot on 3rd Street and cut those weeds. No, that's all, Bessie. Any mail? Uh, a bill for the mayor's windshield. Uh, <laughs> well, goodbye. Probably when the mayor sees what a good job I'm doing, he won't want me to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> Clerk, we'll take three more fielder's gloves. Very well. You pick them out, Leroy. Oh, boy. Will that be all, sir? Well, let's have two of those Louisville slugger bats, the short ones. We're going to have a club. We may as well do this thing right. Gosh, who's going to pay for all this, Unc? The mayor? The mayor? Uh, I hardly think so, Leroy. He's watching, watching the budget these days pretty close. Election year. Well, you don't have to pay for it, do you? Just leave it to me, Leroy. I'll raise the money. You take the equipment out of the field. Okay, we'll go out and practice. So long, huh? So long, Leroy. Let's see. Eighteen fifty. Well, local merchants have been kicking in pretty well. Just need a little more now. Hello, PV. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? You can give me a donation of five dollars, Peavy. Five dollars? Just a minute. I'll go out back and see if Mr. Peavy's in. Uh... You're in, Peavy. And I need the money for a very worthy cause. Buy baseball equipment for a boys' club I'm organizing. Well, that sounds worthy. You bet. Nobody has turned me down, Peavy. And your five dollars will help. Well, I've already made my bank deposit today. But let's see what we have in the cash register. No sale. Business hasn't been exactly rushing today. Not a stampede, if you know what I mean. Yes, I understand, PB. But I'll give you what I have. Yeah. And here's two dollars I got from Mrs. Clark this morning for that marked down hot water bottle. <laughs> Fifty, seventy-five, one hundred, twenty-five. 30, I better 31, say 32, 33, 34. $3.34. Were uh, you planning on buying anything, Mr. Gildersleeve? Me? Well, you might give me some cigars, Peavy. What the heck? Fill out the $5 with El Lobos. The El Lobos? Think you have room in your pockets for that many? <laughs> well, you better make it good Havana's, Peavy. The mayor's coming out this afternoon to pitch the first ball. Oh, you're having a game this afternoon, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, sure. The first one. The kids are going to choose upsides, and we're going to officially open the field. Yeah, and I see that. Well, say, we need an umpire. Why don't you come on out? Well, uh... We need somebody who can call him impartially, Peavy. And I've never known anybody more impartial than you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but I don't think I should close the store. You don't have to close the store. Have Mrs. Peavy come down and run it. She's done it before. No, no, business always seems to drop off a little when I leave Mrs. Peavy in charge. <laughs> oh? She has a habit of standing in the door and looking out, which isn't quite the way to get customers in. <laughs> well, Peavy, we'll miss you out there. Well, that's nice of you to say so, Mr. Jones, please. But you should get a great deal of satisfaction out of knowing you've helped put this thing over. That's very true. You bet, Peavy, because this is one of the most worthy causes you could ever support. You're perfectly right there, Mr. Gildersleeve. And believe me, you'll never miss that $5. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Hi, Commissioner. How's the lipid urocher of Summerfield? Oh, well, thank you, Floyd. Then you've heard? You bet. Great stuff, Commiss. Well, I wish somebody had helped us out when I was a kid. Where I lived, the railroad tracks ran right through left field. Huh? If you timed it right when a slow freight went by, you had a home run sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, things are just about as bad here in Summerfield, Floyd. Yeah, I guess you could have used a freight about the time you broke the mayor's windshield, that eh, commission. <laughs> Now, Floyd. But you're doing a great job, Commish. Well, it's really too big a job for one man, though, Floyd. All of us businessmen have to get behind it. Oh, I get it. 
How much you want? Well, Peavy gave his all. Another five will just about make it. Equipment and things. There you are. But if Lovey ever asks how much I contributed, it was ten. Ten? The cards wasn't running so good last night. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Floyd. Now I'd better get out to the field. I want to be there before the mayor arrives. Hey, you may even get a raise out of this, Commission. The mayor might even name the diamond Gildersleeve Field. Oh, well, if the mayor should see fit to... Hey, I've been looking all over for you. Leroy, what are you doing here? You've been crying. I have not been crying. What's the matter, kid? Those dirty guys! Leroy, what guys? Those dirty guys down there on 3rd Street. They chased us off our ball diamond. What, the new field? They say that's where they play ball, the dirty guys. Well, we'll see about that. Come along with me, Leroy. Okay. Hey, Kamish, I'll go with you. I've been looking for a reason to close up shop all afternoon. Never mind, Floyd. I can handle this. Why did you let them chase you off, Leroy? They were great big guys. Oh. Well, come along, Floyd. <laughs> wonder why Leela Ransom ever bought property over here on 3rd Street. I was born right on this street, Commish. Some of the best fighters in town come out of this neighborhood. The uh, best fighters? Uh-huh. Who chased you off, Leroy? One was a kid named Armstrong. Not Pug Armstrong. Pug? Oh, no, it couldn't have been. Must have been his son. Old Pug's with the fire department. Uh-huh. See? There they are, rocking our diamond. They chased all us kids across the street. I see. Well, we'll soon take care of this. They can't steal our diamond after all I've put into this. Yeah, I got five bucks in it myself. Go get your boys, Leroy. We're taking over. Okay, Uncle. Come on, kids. Ronald's here. Yeah, I dear. All right. Who's the leader of this gang? Hold it, fellas. What'd you say, mister? What's the idea of you boys taking over this lot? What's your name? Well, it's Armstrong. But look, mister... You're just the boy I want to talk to. What's the idea of chasing these boys off this lot, Armstrong? Hey, you ain't Pug Armstrong's son, are you? Yeah, that's right. Well, what do you know? Where is old Pug, anyhow? Now, Floyd. There he is, coming up right behind you. Oop. These two fellas causing a little trouble here, are they, son? <laughs> you remember me, don't you, Pug? Huh? Floyd Munson? I cut your hair many's a time. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> I didn't recognize you out of the barber shop. <laughs> Who's your uh, talky friend? <laughs> What's your trouble, laughing boy? <laughs> well, uh, you see, Mr. Armstrong, I'm the water commissioner. Throckmorton P. Water Commissioner. I mean, Gildersleeve. I've gone to a lot of work to line up this diamond for our boys. Mayor's orders. Yeah, Pug, the commission done a great job. Yes, sir. And your boys don't have a right to chase my boys off the lot. Yeah, we've been playing ball all the time here, way before it was ever fixed up. Yeah. Well, it belongs to our boys club now. You understand, Mr. Armstrong? Well, if your club has taken over the property, I guess that's it. But it's a pretty lousy thing to do. We have to keep our boys off the streets. Sure. So your kids take the diamond, and what happens to ours? They have to go play in the street. Sure. Hey, Commish, maybe Pug's got something there. Instead of Leroy's gang just choosing up sides, why don't the two teams play each other? Well... Sure. What's wrong with that? Have a real game. That'll keep all the kids off the street. Well, that's a good idea, but I was just getting around to it, Floyd. Let me think of these things. Who's in charge here, anyway? I'm sorry, Commish. Now, Pug, uh, Mr. Armstrong, here's what we'll do. Hey, Commish, look, the peeve. Well, Peavy. Yeah, good afternoon, gentlemen. Ah, so you did decide to come out after all. Well, the more I thought about it, the more I didn't want to miss the game. Good to see you, Peeve. I closed up, too. I didn't completely close, Floyd. I left Mrs. Peavy standing in the door. <laughs> <laughs> Great. You're just in time to umpire, though, Peavy. Hey, wait a minute. What's that? Huh? Well, the mayor. Well, get a load of him. An escort and everything. And look who's with him. Judge Hooker. Good. Well, Judge Sleeve, gentlemen. Well, hello, Mayor Twilliger, Judge. Hello, Judge. Uh, uh, Mr. Hello, Armstrong. Judge. How do you do? I, uh, I hope I'm not too late for the opening pitch. <laughs> oh, no, Mr. Mayor. Glad you could make it. We're all ready. You've done a nice job here, Gilda. Yes, Commissioner Gildersleeve. I'm most proud and pleased. You've done a wonderful job. I see you're taking care of a lot more boys than I expected. Well, I decided to expand the club quite suddenly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I see you brought a photographer. Great idea. Well, the newspapers always want a picture of the first pitch, you know. <laughs> All right, you young fellas, some of you get out there in the field. Yeah, get right out there, fellas. Uh, 
Here's a new ball, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Gildersleeve, since you're behind all this, why don't you stand up at the plate and hit the first ball when I pitch it? Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. If you're sure you want me in the photographs... Uh... Get ready now, Gildersleeve. It's liable to come in there pretty fast. Oh, really? Well, I'm set, Your Honor. Slug it out of the park, Hunk! I'd miss it if I was you, Commiss, unless you want to lose your job. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Floyd. Batter up. Play ball. Remember, Peavy, play politics. Wherever the mayor throws it, you got to call it a strike. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Here it comes. Lay into it, come in. Swing, Gilda. Oh, oh, come on. Over. I win, Phil. My goodness. <laughs> Think of it, Mondo. You and me, leading a team to Little League Championship glory. I know that you're just dying to get out there like the old days. What do you say, Coach Mondo? Oh, Coach Mondo. Now, there's a name me haven't heard in a long, long time. Listen, little guy. Me really appreciate the enthusiasm that you is showing for, for the sport. Me really do. But listen. The coaching life, it is behind Mondo now. Me has retired from the game. Actually, me really thinking about writing a book about me experiences. Me publisher says it's gonna sell like hotcakes. <laughs> now, come on, Mondo. I know that you would give anything to get back out there and win a trophy. Think of the glory, the parades, the magazine covers. I think Sidney is overestimating the pageantry of Little League. Quiet, he's being inspiring. Come on, Mondo. What do you say? Another season for old time's sake? Oh, it, it's not about the glory, little guy. It's not about the fame and the magazine covers. It, it's a personal issue. You see, me really had to reconsider me entire coaching career after the last time me trained somebody with Coach Mondo's legendary super shake. It's nearly killed the little guy, and it has been weighing on me conscience ever since. Well, but that doesn't mean anything. I was the last guy you trained with Coach Mondo's Super Shake. That was me. My frail little body couldn't take the overabundance of nutrients contained in the shake, remember? But, but these are healthy young kids we're talking about. They're just dying for someone to give them the type of guiding hand that Coach Mondo has, and they can take as much Super Shake as you can give them. Well, me don't know. Me is really gonna have to think this one over for a while. Okay, me in. <laughs> I knew you'd see the light. Coach Mondo is back in action, baby. Okay, now before you is get too excited, we got to uh, we got to explain a few things for you. Okay, we we is gonna have to have some extensive improvements to the whole system here. We we got to get some training regimens involved. Uh, got to get uh, facility upgrades, sign some uh, big name free agents. Ooh, nil deals. Those are important these days. And uh, oh yeah, we also have to make hundreds of gallons of the super shake. So if you is can go run down to the supermarket and get some eggs, that would be good. Does it matter if the eggs are grade A or grade double A? <laughs> oh, there is so much for me to teach you. Come along with me. Okay. Yep, there goes the nice Little League dynasty right there. Well, if you want more Yesterday Today, you can visit KISU.org or wherever you get your fast-pitching, hard-hitting, big league podcasts. Oh, boy, there's nothing sweller. Hot dogs and sarsaparilla. I'll be that lucky fella.